He read poetry at the edge of the Grand Canyon to me at sunset. We made love during an incredible hailstorm. Every time I saw her, my heart leapt. I felt like my best self with him. Love gives us the best moments in life, the most precious, the most wonderful moments, and heartbreak does the contrary. It's the worst, the most difficult, the most horrible moments. And I was getting interested in this contrast because I think one belongs to the other. Without the horror of love sickness, you wouldn't enjoy love. And it's such an important topic. And it's a typical Christian Fry film, I think, somehow, because people were asking me, well, you know, after war photographer and, uh, you know, outer space, why are you going into romantic love? Because it's so important. What would you be without somebody reflecting you? Of course, you can avoid love sickness, you know, you can just enjoy casual sex and then kind of protect yourself. But if you get into it, you also enjoy it. But then you have also to confront the fact that there might be one day where somebody tells you, well, that's it, it's over. And that's the starting point of my film. I had a friend come in take down all the pictures in my apartment of him so I don't have to look at him. We need to understand that this is an addiction. You know, Sleepless in New York is shot in New York. Why New York? Because it's a good lab. It's the capital of singles. It's a real international city with different ethnic groups, different sexual, you know, orientation. And I wanted to shoot there, but on the other hand, it's very difficult to find people there because it's a lot of activity. So we needed a lot of time to do the casting. And um, the process was quite finally working as I was imagined before, you know. It, it worked through an internet site. These people, you know, being dumped, they could write a diary of separation, a logbook of feelings, onto their own web page. Uh, just for themselves, for my assistant, and for me. So, you know, writing does a lot of good things when you are being dumped, because you have kind of an, a partner, you write down, you, you do something, and some of them, they wrote hundreds of pages, and I learned a lot about the dynamics of love sickness. And, you know, it also, it was the basic of, of, of finding, finally, the, making the decision who to working with as protagonist. I had several dozens of participants writing down the diary of separation and I choose three protagonists and two women you know between 32 and 35 and one man you know uh, 52 uh, years old and um, it's quite different stories I think that was the main purpose no redundancy not twice the same story so that was the first really goal I had and um, one story is not even about being dumped, you know, it's a story of a little mermaid at the mermaid parade at Coney Island, falling in love with King Nipton, the honorary guest, and after kissing for one and a half hour at the shark tank of the Coney Island Aquarium, you know, that was it for him. Because, you know, he was King Nipton, there was a little mermaid, that's it, some kissing, and she fall, fall in love horribly. She was un really totally, horribly lovesick for six months after one and a half hours of kissing in front of the sharks. So that's not a story about being dumped, but it's a story how irrational this system actually is. Everywhere in the world, people express this feeling. It's one of the most powerful brain systems ever created. If there was ever a passionate love affair in the history of mankind, ours reached that level. I feel like I've been dunked in a cold bath. When am I going to get angry enough to drop her? He fucked Imagine it up for himself and it's done. Somebody tells you there's somebody else better than you. You, that's it. It's over, you know. And your self-esteem is at the lowest point of your entire life. And at that very moment, Christian Fry is approaching you with the request to put this state of emergency, this horror, on the big screen. I mean, would you do it, you know? So I was really, of course, not sure if we will find protagonists. And I had a feeling that, you know, this little bit more extroverted 
aspects of the American culture. I mean, people are more extroverted there, and I like that. It's helping, actually, the topic. So that's why the Americas. Now, why New York? You know, it's just, I don't know. I mean, I always wanted to shoot there. It's, it's, a, it's a city which symbols a little bit the world. It has, it has different ethnic groups. Uh, it worked well. It worked well also because people, I think, in New York, can be very lonely. And it's also a film about loneliness, finally. And we were shooting at the subway, in the subways, where people are not lonely, but they are lonely. You know, like Saint-Exupéry said, on peut être seul parmi les hommes. They are in the midst of people, totally isolated, totally in thoughts. And we developed a special lens to shoot in the subway, kind of separating these lonely protagonists from the others in the subway, and it worked very well.